Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're going to lead you in the call to worship. You want to introduce yourself? I'm Jennifer Cromley, and I'll be serving as your liturgist today. Please rise in body or spirit for the call, to, the responsive call to worship. Buenos dias. Good morning. Whether we say Ohio Gasaimas or Bonjour or Labas Raitas or even Habari Ya Asubuhi, it all means good morning. Si, sí, este es el día que hizo el Señor. Me recosijare y me alegrare en ello. Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray together. Almighty God, your, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples, hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A violent wind and tongues of fire were the symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. May your Holy Spirit burst into our lives today, encouraging and inspiring us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ, who offers healing and hope to all people. Amen. Please join us in the hymn, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness, number 286 in your hymnal. Well, good morning. 
Good morning and welcome to Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here, and we really mean that. Happy Pentecost, everyone. Happy Pentecost. Please settle into worship. There are already snacks and drinks in the parlor. If you need a little refreshment as worship goes along, sneak in there. But do join us um, in the parlor after worship for some fellowship time. Like I said, happy Pentecost. It is... Uh, it is the birth of the church. It's the day when we tell the story of the Spirit moving amongst the people who are gathered in Jerusalem like wind and like tongues of fire. And when that happened, something changed in each person and they were able to understand one another, even though the people who were gathered there were so very different. They weren't even speaking the same language. And I wonder what that story does for us today. How does it change who we are and how we are in the world, especially whenever we are with people who are different from us? How does it change us? We're going to think about that a little later in worship. We're also going to have a Pentecost moment ourselves. Uh, we thought that instead of just Jennifer reading the Pentecost story today, that we would all read it together together. So you'll need this later in worship. Find that there's a folded, like, letter-sized piece of paper. Um, and we're going to divvy up some, some parts. Y you won't have a solo part. You're going to be, like, you're going to be reader three, and you're going to be reader four, and then we're all going to read it together. It's a little lopsided today. If anybody from over here wants to go over here and give them a little support, feel free. Feel free. So friends, um, you go, oh, thank, thank you. The lectern side is like, do you don't need to worry about us. We are, we are just fine. Um, oh, I do want to invite you, if you have a smartphone, to check in wherever you hang out um, on social media. Let folks know what we're doing today and where you are. It's a great way to invite people to church. And again, friends, I want to say welcome, that we welcome you. We welcome you this morning to Community United Church of Christ. And who are we? We are young and old and middle-aged. We are gay and straight and in between and beyond. We are street smart and college educated, confused and inspired, happy and sad. Some of us can't pay our bills and some of us have more than enough to share. Who are we? We are the body of Christ, and together we are the church. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, and we really mean that. Welcome to worship. lives remain hidden, when our hearts are shuttered, when our souls are filled with fear because of what we have done and said, God comes breathing new life, blowing away our failings, restoring us to new hope. Please join me as we pray together our prayer of confession. Let us pray. We aren't ready, Lord. It is easier for us to hide in the upper rooms of our lives, to let the world go by and not acknowledge your presence, but you have challenged us to come alive again with your love, words of healing mercy. Forgive us and pour your mercy into the closed rooms of our hearts. Breathe your peace upon us that we might be healers of brokenness. Breathe your hope upon us 
that we might open ourselves to the lonely. Breathe your love into us that we might be as generous and welcoming as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Don't be afraid. God's Holy Spirit brings you healing, comfort, and hope. You are being prepared to serve God in some mighty ways. Let us rejoice and remember that God's Holy Spirit is with us always. Amen and amen. Friends, in this newness of life that we have each received, you are invited to rise, embody your spirit, and share signs of peace with each other. Peace be with you. Friends, I want to invite you to take a look at the back wall. We do have a few folks worshiping with us on, um, on Zoom today and many more on Facebook and say, peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. I want to invite the kiddos to come down. Hello. I'm so glad you're both here. Um, it's been a while since we've used the bucket. Do you remember what we do with the bucket? What do, you, what do we do? Right, we put our thumb in. And what do we do before we put our thumb in? We look at the lines on our thumb. So I want to invite everybody to look at the lines on your thumb. I have to look over my glasses at the lines on my thumb. So. Do you see those lines on your thumb? Nobody else in all of history has lines like that on their thumb. You are a gift from God. You are special and unique, and you have skills and gifts and talents, and you can learn new things. And the best thing that we can do with our skills and gifts and talents and the new things that we learn is to offer those in the service of God to make the world a more just and merciful and peaceful place. And so this is our offering bucket. And if you have money, you can put money in the offering bucket. Um, but you can, we can all put our thumbprint in the offering bucket or in the offering plate when it gets passed around. And it's this moment whenever we offer what we have to give um, in the service of love in the world. So I'm going to put your thumbprint in there. I'm going to put your thumbprint in there. And I will put my thumbprint in here. <clears throat> so, what's different about the sanctuary today? It's red, orange, and yellow. And will you look around at the congregation? So many people wore fire colors today. And why? What, why? why? Why are we wearing red today instead of like purple or blue or green? Well, and what's special about Pentecost? What's the story that we tell? Do you remember? No, that's okay. Do you remember? No. <laughs> You're like, no. So um, on this day, the, the people, so it's like 50 days after Jesus died because um, you think so Passover 
right? Jesus died right after Passover, and then Penta, meaning 50, 50 days after Passover. They had all gathered in Jerusalem, um, and they were still kind of freaked out because Jesus had died. That is not at all what they thought was going to happen. Um, and, and, then, and then the Holy Spirit showed up, and it moved through the place where they were gathering, and the story says that it moved through like a rushing wind and like fire. And then this totally wackadoodle thing happened where a, a tongue of fire rested on each person's head. Now think back to earlier in worship, whenever we were singing that song called Spirit, what happened during that song? Oh, you have a question first. Which question? Oh, do the tongues of fire look like um, human tongues? Blah. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. I have no idea. Um, I think we can use our imaginations, and we can imagine that that looked in lots of different ways. Some, some really old pieces of artwork, it just kind of looks like, everybody looks like a birthday candle because they each have a little, like, flame on top of their head, which I think is really funny. And, and other, other artists have interpreted that like big that comes over the people. So here's my question. What happened earlier in worship whenever we sang spirit? Did you look up at all? What happened? There was a kite thing. What do you think the kite thing is supposed to represent on this day? The tongues of fire. Ding, 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 ding. You win a coloring page. Well done. And so, and so, um, what are we supposed to remember on this day? Yeah, and it did what? It moved where? Yeah, it moved all over the people, and it made them be able to understand each other in ways that they couldn't before. Ding, 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 ding. You also want a coloring page. Well done. Question. Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, I have so many coloring pages, and you might be an adult like me, and you're like, I wish I had a coloring page. Um, so I'm going to hand these to Leo and Violet, and they're going to walk up the aisle. And if you would like a coloring page to take home with you today, or even to color during worship, I think all you have to do is raise your hand, and they will give you a coloring page. These are very cool. They're from Illustrated Ministries, um, and they're neat. Thanks for coming up today, guys. Um, kids are going to stay in worship today. Hey, Leo, why don't you go? Why don't you both go up the middle aisle, and you can take your side, and Violet can take her side can hand out coloring pages. Thank you so much.
Later in worship, we will offer up our joys and concerns. Your prayer requests will be offered aloud. Whether you are sitting here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us remotely, you are invited to add your joys and concerns, but not to the Google form because we're having technical difficulties today. So you have two options. If you are here in person, you can fill out a yellow prayer card as I did. Um, and, uh, or if you're online, you can put your prayer requests in the chat. So friends, whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now to the meaning that these words might hold for us on this day. So find your insert, would you? Uh, it just seemed like much more fun for us to read this together um, and to have our own Pentecost moment than for us to have one person read. So again, the way that this is going to work is that Jennifer is reader one, I am reader two. The people in front of Jennifer are reader three. The folks in front of me are reader four. And if you are online, you can read whatever parts you want to read. <clears throat> and so this is a reader's theater uh, which Pastor Connie adapted for us. And it is an adaptation of Acts 2, 1 through 21. You will notice that she has um, been merciful with us and she has not listed all of the all of the, the the nationalities of the people who are there because that would be a challenge for us to read so we will imagine right that there are people of lots of different um, nationalities and races who have gathered in this place in Jerusalem and so we begin when the day of Pentecost had come they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon, upon all, all flesh. flesh. And your sons and your daughters and your children shall prophesy, and your young ones shall see visions, and your old ones shall dream dreams. They shall see visions. They shall dream dreams, even upon my servants, men and women and people of all genders. In those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. They will prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The, sh the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then, then everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Together, Together, let us say, 
May May the Spirit Spirit bless bless us with wisdom and wonder wonder as as we ponder the meaning of these words in our our lives. Please rise in body or spirit for our hymn, God of Change and Glory, in the hymnal number 177. If you do have a prayer request card, if you wave that, the ushers will come and get it from you. Um, we're going to begin this morning by, by wrestling with this question asked at the beginning of worship. Can you think of a time, uh, a real example, when people came together across lines of difference? Maybe it was for a cause, maybe it was in the face of a difficulty. Um, and we're actually gonna we're actually gonna talk in small groups. So I want you to look around. If you're sitting by yourself, find somebody else who's sitting by themselves and slide near each other. Um, but I want to give you some time to talk about this and tell each other some stories. So think about a time when people came together across lines of difference. Let's talk about that amongst ourselves for a few minutes. And if you're worshiping with us on Zoom or on Facebook. Please feel free to, um, to share a story in, uh, in the comments or in the chat. Oh, thank you. Let's chat about this.
excuse me. What did you say? Can you think of uh, examples when people have come together? And maybe it was unexpected. Yeah. Roxy. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so, so, um, so Dennis just shared that, like Roxy gave the example of concerts, that people are so very different from each other. They come together in this one place and there's this amazing thing that happens, right, whenever we come to concerts. I, I actually just saw online um, that there were fans of a particular artist who, um, who they crowdsourced money so that fans who couldn't afford tickets to go see their favorite artist could like tap into them, right? I know, it made me so happy. So they could tap into this fund so that they could go see their favorite artist. Um, but also, Fan conventions, right? Like you end up, if, if you've ever been to a fan convention, I've been to a few fan conventions, you end up showing up and talking to people from all over the place and, and, and you have this sense of like, we are together in this fandom. It's a very bizarre and wonderful experience. Tell me. One of my favorite things about Jiggly Cafe <clears throat> is that people who otherwise wouldn't cross paths yeah. to try and have a drink together. Yeah. So Ramona said that one of her favorite things about Jubilee Cafe is that people who otherwise would never, ever, ever uh, sit down and eat a meal together, talk to each other, that they do. And that you see these moments where people, they wonder if it's okay to sit, um, they wonder if it's okay to, to chat with each other, but they do, and it's wonderful. Yeah, I have this memory from Jubilee where um, this person who I know was a Fulbright scholar sitting across from this man who sleeps in the park and they had this conversation about life. And where else does that happen? How else does that happen, right? But we help create spaces because um, Jesus invites us to tables all the time. And it's at those kinds of tables when everything, everything changes. Other stories like that? Oh, yeah, exactly. Public school. Um, public school because um, you have... You have poor kids and rich kids. You have kids of lots of different um, uh, um, racial backgrounds. In, in this town, you have kids from lots of different nationalities coming together to learn. And there's a sense of pride and togetherness and community that happens in public school. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Jean said the Women's March... Uh, Jean, Jean and I were bus buddies for the Women's March. Anybody else go to the Women's March? Who else went? Janelle? Oh, you all did? Fabulous. Yeah. Um, people from all different walks of life descending upon Washington, D.C. And, um, and being united in a, in a cause, in a thought, in a care for the world. Um, we were there with thousands and thousands and thousands of women. Turn around, there's one of my best friends from high school. Turn around, there's one of my sorority sisters. It was so bizarre, right? But this wonderful moment of togetherness um, in the face of lots of uncertainty um, and difficulty. Any other examples? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Chase said, it's not the only, not the only march, right? But that we have all of these different marches, moments of um, when people are galvanized in a sense of um, 
wanting to move the world in a different way, wanting to bend the arc of the universe in a different way. Ooh, a couple more. necessarily but go ahead sure sure Sure. So, so I'm going to summarize what you said. So, so Mara brings up a really interesting perspective um, that depending on who you are, how old you are, there could be other factors of identity. Um, those moments of togetherness get shaped by who we are and, and how we are in the world. Last one, and then we're going to So the thing, the thing that came to my mind right away um, was a disaster. And that on my birthday one year, I don't know, I must have turned, it was my 18th or 19th birthday, there was a tornado that leveled the town that's just to the west of where I grew up. And people came from all over southern Indiana to help with the cleanup of that town. I thought of that moment because of the way that today's invocation hit me differently. Would you look at that for a moment? I was looking at that this week and sort of skipped over that first sentence and just went to a violent wind in tongues of fire, and it stopped me. I don't know why reading it in this way instead of like from the Bible, but reading it in this prayer caught me in a different way, but I went, oh, a violent wind in tongues of fire, oh. There was a natural disaster, oh, oh. I remember looking at David this week and saying, hang on, hang on, hang on. What if this actually wasn't a moment of the Holy Spirit, but a moment of disaster that struck, and then suddenly people came together from it. What are the things that make it possible for us to come together? And what gets in our way? That's what we're talking about today. As we prepare for the word preached, would you join with me, your hearts and minds in prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I've always read this story in the same way. They're gathered in one place, all of the people together in the upper room, and then the Holy Spirit, 
comes upon them like tongues of fire. And I always do this hand motion, right? Touching each one of them. And this wind, the Holy Spirit comes like a wind, and then we sing spirit. And I've always thought about it in the same way. And I really don't know what happened this week. But all of a sudden, everything that I thought I knew about the story changed. And I read it in a different way. And then suddenly, there were different possibilities. What could this story also be about if we read it in a different way? What if there really was a, a storm with strong winds, a lightning strike, and fire? What if that's the thing that pulls the people together? Because suddenly, they need one another in order to survive. Sometimes <clears throat> what we think we know or definitely do not know about a story gets in the way of our understanding. So let's start with what we don't know today. Anytime we talk about the Holy Spirit, people say, I don't know what that is. It happens every year in confirmation. It happened just a couple of weeks ago. John Aline actually said to me, Emily and I were talking about the Holy Spirit. Neither of us knew what it was. I said, well, join the club. Yes, exactly. But I think sometimes as, uh, as followers of Jesus, we get to a story about the Holy Spirit and we go, oh, I don't know what that means. And then we sort of shut down and disconnect from the story. I want to tell you that it's okay if you don't know what the Holy Spirit is. In fact, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, it doesn't matter if you don't know. Turn to them and say, it doesn't matter if you don't know. Yeah. What matters is that you're open to the movement of the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, what matters is if you're open to the movement of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it actually doesn't matter if you don't know don't let it get in your way. And as for what we do know, well, we tell these stories in such specific ways over and over and over again that sometimes we get saddled with one interpretation. We have one image of this story but again, in reading it this week, it became all new because I read it in a different way. So I'm really curious about that different way. What if this story really is about another moment of crisis that the disciples are having? Again, I said it at the top of worship and I'll say it again. They're sort of awash in crisis. Jesus died just 50 days ago. And now, what if there is this second crisis? What if a natural disaster is upon them? And what if in this moment, the power of God intercedes and pulls them together in love? What if it makes them a people when before they were just strangers? What if this spirit, this Holy Spirit, whatever that is, makes it possible for them to care about one another very deeply in ways that they otherwise would have been hesitant to do? And I mean, that's what happens next in the story. Right? They form a community where there was none originally. When the early church comes together. They gather together in homes. They break bread. They pray together. They share all things in common so that, so that no one has a need. They embody the kingdom of God just by being there for each other and with each other and understanding each other in ways that they could not before. I think it takes something, something 
something that changes us, something that opens us up, something that breaks apart the boundaries that we've put up between one another in order for that kind of community to form. Because, as Reverend Benjamin Kramer said this week on social media, we will believe so many things about the people we've already decided not to love. We will believe, he didn't say things, he said myths. We will believe so many myths about the people we've already decided not to love. I'm sure when all of those people gathered in Jerusalem, locked away in an upper room because they were so afraid, so afraid of the Romans, I'm sure that they looked around that room and said, yeah, I don't think I trust you, and I don't think I trust you, and I don't think I trust you. We will believe so many myths about the people we've already decided not to love. We need the Holy Spirit to blow into our lives, to clear away those myths, to burn away our misconceptions. to clear away anything that doesn't work in the service of God's greater justice and mercy, and to fill us with love once again. What could be, what would be, what is possible when we let that kind of Pentecost power become real in our lives? I want to close today with a poem. It's a Jan Richardson poem, not the one in the front of your bulletin, but a new one for Pentecost called The Blessing That Undoes Us. <clears throat> On the day when you are wearing your certainty like a cloak and your sureness goes before you like a shield or a sword, May the sound of God's name spill from your lips as you have never heard it before. May your knowing be undone. May mystery confound your understanding. May the divine rain down in strange syllables, yet with an ancient familiarity, a knowing born in the blood, in the ear, the tongue, bringing clarity that comes not in stone or in steel, but in fire, in flame. May there come one searing word, enough to bear you to the bone, enough to set your heart ablaze, enough to make you whole again. May it be so. Amen.
the time in worship when we share with one another the stuff of our lives, our joys, and our uh, sorrows. Today, we lift up these prayer concerns. First, we have a joy. I received um, a text from Pastor Sarah down in North Carolina that said, Thanks to the inspiration of Community UCC, uh, Land of Sky Church has, um, has raised enough money to relieve a million dollars worth of medical debt. So, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And yes, that deserves a round of applause. Good job, Land of Sky. Jennifer Cromley at, uh, offers prayers of gratitude that Stephanie and Sergio safely welcomed a new baby, Salvador, to the world on Friday. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Kelly also offers prayers of joy for her grandma, Alice Tull, who will be celebrating her 99th birthday tomorrow with family. Cheers to many more birthdays, my grams. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lastly, I offer um, prayers of concern from Bryn. <clears throat> Bryn says this. Um, they have discovered that Bryn has a mass in her abdomen. It is probably ovarian cancer, but it may not be ovarian cancer. So Bryn would appreciate if everyone could pray that it is not cancer. Bryn also says that uh, she would invite everyone to pray that if it is cancer, uh, for a speedy recovery, um, healing from surgery, and for excellent chemotherapy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Friends, I would invite you to gather up all of the, all of the joys and concerns that you carry with you. Let us gather those now and be of one heart and mind as we offer our prayers to God. <clears throat> We gather this morning, God, not unlike those early disciples, not in an upper room, but in a room that is ours. And if only for these moments we are locked away from the world. And yet we pray, come, O oh Spirit, come in power to refresh and renew us, Draw us in your tether. Draw us together, God, in your love. Fill us with your mercy and your grace. Fill us with your compassion and your peace. And then send us. Send us out together as your people in the world. Let us do your work of reconciliation, your work of justice, your work of transformation, until that blessed day when all things have been made right once more, restored to what you dreamed on that day when you brought order out of chaos and set all things in motion. Come, O oh Spirit, come in power. Renew us, refresh us, heal us, transform us that we might transform the world for your sake. Amen and amen. <clears throat> As God has so richly blessed us, in our gratitude, let us return a portion of these blessings back to God. If you are able, please consider giving to the work and ministry of Community United Church of Christ. 
All offerings put into the globes will go to the Strengthen the Church Fund. This special national offering will be taken today and for the next two weeks. And you can read the information on the bulletin insert that's titled On Holy Ground and also on the green sheet to learn more about what that fund is used for. Offerings placed in the offering plates will support the mission and ministry of this local church. If you haven't brought uh, actual money or checks to put in today, I invite you to do what the kids do and put your thumbprint in and offer yourself. Uh, you may give online by going to www.community-ucc.org and clicking donate. There's also a drop down on that site for the Strength in the Church Fund if you wish to donate to that. May God bless and multiply all that we offer. And as we take the offering today, I hope you'll enjoy some sounds and images of ways strength in the church is put to use. Thank you. Let us pray, holy, good, and gracious God, bless all of the gifts that we have offered today, the gifts of our time and our talent and our treasure. Bless especially the gifts that we have offered to the work of the United Church of Christ. Holy One, we endeavor to be your community of faith together in so many ways, with so many different people. God, bless the work that we do together as a church. Bless us, and may we all be one. Amen. Friends, please be seated for the commissioning of the community, that moment when we commission you to go out and be the church in the world. Um, you have lots of information located in your green sheet 
I want to draw your attention to just a couple of things. Um, we, Jubilee Cafe is open tomorrow, um, and I know that we need um, probably some cleanup helpers and a couple of a couple more servers. You can um, log on to the Sign Up Genius and um, come and help with that. It's going to be a, a good meal and a good time um, to serve folks in our community. Um, Tom. Can you believe it's going to be June this week? What? Holy cow. <clears throat> and in fact, it's going to be June on Thursday morning, which is the first Thursday of the month. So all of you that identify as male, come join us at Urbana Garden Breakfast at 7 a.m., Chase. That's <laughs> 7 a.m. I know you're going to pray about it, but... <laughs> Want to invite you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Dennis. <laughs> so this is a proxy request here. So um, this week, some of you probably have heard that locally we have a family that's um, homeless that have like 11 children, I believe, and they're living in a tent somewhere locally and they've been trying to raise funds for them through the canteen run. So my wife wanted to come up here but it's one of those near and dear things to our heart. So see, now I'm struggling because, you know. Anyways, so she just wanted to let you guys know that if you had questions or you wanted to reach out or do something, she had contact information, I think, with the people at the canteen run. And she's talked to Leah about it a little bit too, but we just wanted to bring it to your attention in case you didn't know. And if you had questions to come see Rocio or Leah, thank you. Thank you so much. Ilsa. I'm here on behalf of your kickball captain, Amanda, who was unable to make it today. Uh, she wanted you all to know that um, kickball, the start of kickball has been pushed back a week, so the first game will not be this Thursday, but next Thursday. But the first practice will be this Wednesday at 6.30 at Dodds Park in Champaign. So those of you who are on kickball, the time is now. And we want to um, pray that whether people are running or kicking or catching, that they will be filled with courage and strength and endurance and come together as a community um, to kick some butt in kickball this summer. Amen and amen. Emma. All right, just one last reminder. If you're in the kind of young adult-ish age group, grad school, just post-grad school, just post-graduation, whatever, um, we're going to try and start doing some meetups. The first one is in two days on Tuesday at the Japan House at 6.30. Bring some kind of snacky thing, a chair, a blanket. We'll just hang out and chat. If you have any questions, ask me or Leah. Um, but I think I've talked to everybody who I know is going. So. And there's, there's a little hill sort of right past the rock garden at where, where some of the um, pretty trees are, and that's where we're going to... That's where we're going to meet. Um, your drop dead deadline for the communigram is Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. So if you don't, if you have something that needs to go in the June communigram, please have it in Carla's inbox by Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And then two worship reminders. Um, one, that our next Pack a Pew Sunday is on June 11th. It's the day whenever we want to when we want to make sure that everybody is here, we'll have special things in worship and a special fellowship time and activity that day. It's a great day to invite friends. And beginning next Sunday, it's the Gospel According to Oz. We're going to have a summer worship series that features um, special uh, music and movie clips from um, The Wizard of Oz and the 1970s movie musical The Wiz and also from Wicked. I know that there are still some singing opportunities available and those are in the parlor on a sign-up sheet. It's going to be a really, really fun worship series and I think an insightful one as well. So join us for that. Last but not least, I do want to mention that um, that the Anders Tompkin family is heading off on sabbatical. Today's their last Sunday in worship with us, and that they will be um, off in Australia for the um, for six months. Oh, for a whole 
for a whole year. I didn't know you were going to be gone for a whole year, oh, for a whole year. And so, and so we offer God's blessings upon your family, and we pray that you will come back to us safe with new experiences and insights to offer blessings as you go on your way. Friends, our... Mm -hmm. A whole year, Oscar and Leo, we're not going to recognize you whenever you come back at all. Friends, our closing hymn is number 267, Come, O Spirit, Dwell Among Us. Let's sing. go from this place knowing that God loves you so very much, that Jesus came to give us life and to give it abundantly, that the Holy Spirit surrounds us this day and all days. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.